All right, our next speaker is Steve from Zenly, with a Zen-like title, title Develop Like It's Production. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm going to be speaking about using Bazel and Kubernetes to develop on your local machine like it's production. So <clears throat> a little bit about Zenly first. We are, are essentially a geolocation app, and we figure out what your friends are up, and we actually allow you to figure out what your friends are up to in real time. We don't drain the battery. We're battery friendly. We're privacy friendly as well. Um, very privacy conscious too. Uh, so I invite you to check it out. So um, as you may have guessed, we have a lot of backends at Zenly. And so our whole production is running on Kubernetes. <clears throat> the problem is you know, you get this dependency graph of services where, you know, the API depends on this service, which depends on the database, which also depends on this other service. And you get into this sort of weird, you know, fuzzy situation where you don't really know and you just apply everything in the hopes that it will work. <clears throat> Thankfully, there's this thing called rules K K uh, K8S which is really defining a, a Kubernetes uh, dependency graph in Basel. So you just say, all right, this is my, yeah, so Kubernetes is you know, configured with YAML files. And it basically allows you to link a YAML file to a target and then aggregate targets into multiple you know, um, bundles. So as you can see in this example, I have this API.k8s um, target and then that's linking to my deployment, and then I can do a bundle of, of other targets, which you know define you know my dependencies. So if I want to apply the API, I need to apply the de the, de the deployment. I need to apply the database, the queue, and the service one in that case. So the cool thing is it allows us to have one dependency graph um, for the whole you know production system. This other thing is, but then you need a Kubernetes cluster, and Kubernetes is not known to be very lightweight. So thankfully, there's this thing called K3S. So there's a lot of K something S um, in the ecosystem. Basically, it's a lightweight Kubernetes cluster. You can run like single node on your machine. And what we do is just we just run Bazel run K3S, and it will spawn like in Docker, because thankfully, it runs in Docker, which is great. It will run a Kubernetes cluster, a single node Kubernetes cluster on the machine in a Docker container. We get a UI with this other tool called K9S, which is also run like this. And it's, this is the one you see on the screen, and it's downloaded by Bazel. The greatest thing is, with rule K8S, you K8S, you can link binaries to Docker images to deployments. So you have this one pipeline of, from source code to deployment. So, and everything is linked. Everything is correct, Bazel. Um, and you can do also, you know, initialization, like say you, you spawn the database and you want to, you know, apply the schema, you can do that in a really lightweight uh, bootstrap, you know, binary, which happens to have all your dependencies, like as a, all your services. So in one line of code, one line, uh, one command line, you can build and deploy this whole dependency graph of services um, directly on your machine. Testing. Testing is supported as well. So it's not part of rules K8S. We did our own thing, but it's basically a test runner. It takes an, a, any binary, wraps it in Docker image, and runs it as a Kubernetes uh, job. So basically what you can have is you can have a test that depends on a database, a queue, another service which gets built, and so on and so forth. Um, so not all, of, not all of, I mean, not everything works. Success failures, of obviously, logs you get. You basically run Bazel test, you get the log. Uh, test arguments and flakiness are not working because they are runtime part of the test, but it, we're, we're working on that. It basically comes down to modifying the YAML at runtime. And finally, this thing with K8S, rule K8S, is that the, the cluster doesn't have to be on your machine, it can be anywhere. So with the same workflow, you can deploy either like locally in the Docker container, uh, cluster container, or you can deploy on some other container that's running on you know Google Cloud or any, uh, anywhere, and with VPN and uh, I mean what we do is we spawn a VPN in the cluster, which means we can have access to all the like the pods running in the cluster as if they were running on my machine. Dep I mean regardless, they're running locally or remotely, 
We have this other you know, little thing with KR code that we just print on the terminal, and because we do a mobile app, and developers can just flash it, and then you know, they connect to the VPN, and they're connected to their local development environment. Thank you. Four seconds late. <laughs> that was, uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm on Twitter. Uh, not well. Uh, Rolls at S. No, oh no, not yet. But it's it's basically the the only custom thing is the K3S runner. Oh, sorry. The question was if it was open source. Um, the K3S runner, and so we might do a Rolls K3S with the test runner and uh, like this whole sugar thing. But I can show you. It's not really complex. Uh, as opposed to other, uh, so the question is why, K, why K3S? So there are a few Kubernetes distributions. Uh, Minikube, uh, Docker for Mac has one built in, K3S as well. The, the, it all boiled down to the fact that it was running on, in Docker. So we could just do Docker run K3S. And also there's this tiny, very painful thing of uh, Hypercube, which is the coordinator in Kubernetes that's consuming half a core every time like all the time, and so it's really painful for like laptops because the battery is, that is dying. It turns out in K3S, it's consuming like 15, 20%, whereas in Minikube, it's like 50%. I don't really know why, but, you know, I but mainly Docker. As opposed, sorry, as opposed to a VM. Thank you. Right, thanks to Philippe, Ron, Gunnar, and Steve. Uh, and we'll reconvene again at 3.15 in this room. We have four more talks and four more talks later. Right, thanks everyone.